it's not often that I talk about Ground Branch because, you know, they're a tiny team and they don't release a whole lot of updates, but the reason I'm talking about them today is because they just released a decently sized update with a lot of information that's going to tell us what's going to go on in the future. So I thought that we would hop into that. This is an update to the current 1030 update that is in the main game itself, I believe. They're just adding on to that. It's not 1031, which is when uh, animations are supposed to come out, I think. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So the name of this update is called Build Update 25 for version 1030. We're going to start with changes in default controls. As mentioned in the opening, all your game settings will be reset when you first launch this game update. Well, considering I've never changed up the controls, it shouldn't affect me. It's a good chance to reconsider your custom key bindings and keep the following default control changes in mind. Climbing is now accomplished by holding space. I remember it used to be just tapping space, but kind of threw me off when I had to hold it. But now I know. That allows players to cancel the action and avoid accidental climbing. I was already so used to just tapping it that I was like confused as to why it wasn't working. But yeah. Zoom in and out, aka scope magnification, is now accomplished via alt mouse wheel. Scrolling up and down. I didn't realize that they changed that. I thought that was always a thing. Well, well. It always just felt so natural to me that maybe I didn't notice the change. And that seems to be it for key changes. Not too many, it seems. But the two that are here seem like really good choices in my opinion. Moving on here. User interface or UI. The last few months have seen the first pass of the UI overhaul. An ongoing process to improve all areas of the user interface in ground branch. Since version 1029, many small implements from interaction prompts to transition screens have received minor art updates, while a few others were more significantly changed. Here are the proponent ones. Customization operator screen. The first official iteration of the new customization operator screen layout is here, and it is guaranteed to make your tactical Barbie? <laughs> is that what they're calling it? Experience a lot better. And they're showing off the screen that we've been using a lot in the CTE, and I really like this screen. I think my only issue with it, though, is that um when you're customizing a gun like it creates like another like tab kind of like pops out underneath it like if you keep like messing with the gun and putting a bunch of stuff on it and keep saving it and saving it and saving it it'll create more rows like what they should do is implement like a like a drop menu for the same gun so that way when you click on that gun a like a drop menu will form and then you can like click whichever one that's named that you want to play with you know what i'm saying it would definitely clear up a lot of the clutter but yeah that's like my major issue with it like i can't think of anything else but uh, yeah i hope they uh solve that but anyways although it should be fairly intuitive some of the features are worth explaining further editing items you can now edit straight from the loadout overview screen by clicking the i'm gonna say gear icon at the bottom right corner of each item slot no more looking for your favorite mk18 build in a drop down menu just add a suppressor i know right that's so nice because i remember having to like completely like look for the whole weapon i'm like shit which one is it glad that that's here once you're happy creating or editing a build click save Choose a build name and you're done. And it also says here that if you save over a current version, it will trigger an overwrite prompt and you will have to accept it. This is like, you know, just in case you don't want to save over one that's already being made and you just wanted to create another one. So simple stuff. But anyways, preset kits. Your operator customization screen is now split into four main sections that we're calling presets or kits. Although the rationale is similar to what we had before, these section kits can now be saved and loaded individually. They currently are profile. This section is very likely to receive options in the future, but author is nothing new. It's basically your name, appearance, facial hair, you know, that kind of stuff. Appearance only has four options, but more choices are going to be on the way, like, you know, uh, when they're going to add in females into the game and more character models and stuff like that. I actually heard that they were going to change out some of these models too, with more updated ones, which is pretty cool. But yeah, weapon kits, your selection of firearms, but we're not teasing an upcoming slot. Ooh, you got the primary, secondary, and a new special purpose, which I've still never found out what that was would actually be used for but they say here it's not available yet this is where things like breaching shotguns and other specialized weapons would go oh okay cool would that mean also c2 charges are they bringing some swap force shit into here oh yeah gear kit this is where the more functional load oriented part of your customization goes headgear your choice of helmet or soft cover platform vests rigs and plate carriers go in here which i don't think they've actually implemented that yet or at least i haven't noticed belt a new slot belts were previously selected under platform you can now run both of them and it means a lot more real estate to attach pouches to nice oh, i didn't know you could do that i need to check that out i didn't know you could add more pouches to that i, mean, I didn't even know what it was for to be honest holster this slot is likely going away once we get things more in order there's currently only one holster option in three different colors though you can choose not to carry one at all now interesting the next thing here says outfit a mostly cosmetic appeal focused section eyewear mask previously face wear top previously 
actually shirt, pants, gloves, footwear. So that's pretty cool. Loadout summary. The loadout summary is a very old list of ammunition, ordnance, and equipment you're carrying on your platform and or belt. It is now located below the weapons kit. Neato. Encumbrance meter, which was newly added to the game. Now that the encumbrance system is in place, we'll get into full detail on that later. We need something to convey how much you're carrying. The encumbrance system meter gives the players a rough idea of whether the loadout is light, medium, or heavy. In terms of the encumbrance system on a scale of 5 to 55 kg, or kilograms I think it is, each of the three weight categories is currently only a simple abstraction, and there's no actual upper limit on how much the player can carry. So does that mean that it just shows how much weight you actually have and it doesn't really affect you? Is that what I'm reading or is that not? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure with that one. I don't think I read it right. Moving on. Most, if not all, non-cosmetic items have a weight value now, so keep an eye on that meter for how much you're carrying, and please let us know if we miss something. Hmm. Interesting. Moving on here. HUD and other UI changes. The in-game UI and HUD elements work largely the same as before, but they look nicer. Here are some of the main areas of interest. New stance indicator. The stance indicator has been updated with a brand new icon, in addition to the character stances. I haven't actually noticed that, but apparently they did add stance indicators, which I haven't actually seen. They now also convey the weapon position your character is currently using. Wondering if you have your rifle at low ready, your pistol at close ready, or even anything equipped at all? Turn the stance indicator on. Oh, okay, so I have to actually turn it on. I might go check that out. Settings, gameplay, show crouch. Okay. Oh, that's pretty neat. Definitely getting a swap four vibe from this uh, update so far. So that's pretty neat. Let's move on here. Some notes. Leaning is no longer displayed. It is unnecessary at this point and at odds with the much more useful weapon position indicators. So they took out leaning for the little indicator there. Not sure how to feel about that. But anyways, gameplay settings have yet to be updated to allow the player to control which icons to display. For example, only show icons for when your weapon isn't immediately visible on screen. Okay. Spectator mode. The spectator mode of you press F6, now features a mini map that tracks the position of friendly players. Additionally, all the little shortcuts are now listed at the bottom bar. Neat. It says here, if you press middle mouse while in spectator mode, you will see extra options. They include mini map display options such as zoom level controls, showing terrace positions and player names and more. Yeah, I've actually shown that off in a previous, it was either a stream or a video, it might have been both, but yeah, it's a pretty neat feature that I actually like to show when I'm commentating over things. Definitely easier to see names and stuff like that. But anyways. AFK detection system. After two minutes of complete inactivity, players will receive a prompt. Failure to respond to it will result in them being removed from the mission area and sent back to the ready room. Yeah, that happened to me. I think I was like motionless for like a full two minutes, but then I came back and I actually killed like three people, but I got sent back to the ready room anyway. I was like, what the frag? It's like I actually started moving. What the hell? This was while I was streaming, I think, and people saw that I needed to press a button, but I didn't see the button. But anyways, player muting shortcuts. While playing online, you can now select select mute all, mute talking, and unmute all. Shortcuts at the bottom of the screen. Nice. The only one there's people that I don't want to talk to, I can mute them now. Yeah. General HUD art pass. The entire HUD has received a basic art pass. From the inventory top bar, all the way to the text chat formatting, new VoIP icons, adjusted interaction prompts, and updated pop-in hints are also a part of the package, which is pretty cool. They show a picture of it right here, and uh, yeah, it looks, it looks pretty neat. At the top of the screen, there is a frame counter and net info bottom left the new radio icon bottom center the new door usage interaction prompt bottom right new stance indicator so yeah this is pretty much everything when it comes to the hud in order for you to display your frame rate you would have to go through settings video and show frame rate same with the um stance indicator you have to actually turn that on if you actually want it on but for people who like immersion generally they're going to turn it off mostly i honestly don't mind to be honest it, it looks cool it reminds me a lot of swap 4 and uh, yeah let's push on here item skin display names we have got gone over the item skins to fix mismatching skin names and make sure they are consistent across items. It's a lot of skins, so there could still be a rogue label or two out there. Ring us if you find any. I'll be sure to let you know. Little known issue, the abbreviation name for Snakeskin Desert skin for the M4A1 Block 2 and MK18 Mod 1 combines display with the lowercase d desert. It displays internally and we have no idea why. Oh, well, you should probably fix it. You know what I mean? Continuing on here. 
here. Encumbrance system. One of the most eagerly awaited features in the game. I wouldn't say eagerly awaited because I'm not really a fan of encumbrance systems, but it definitely brings realism into the game, I would say. The encumbrance system is finally here. Although it still has a way to go, it is a solid foundation to make sure that the loadout choices and play style are even more important. The main components of the encumbrance system are stamina and arm strength. If you've watched my most recent videos on Ground Branch, you'll always see me complaining about the sway, sway, stamina. Your stamina level will drop the more you run, sprint, jump, and climb around. The more weight you carry on your character, the greater the impact of your movement on your stamina level. Lower stamina will increase the weapon's sway when aiming by adding a visible breathing up and down pattern to it. When your stamina level drops to zero, you are currently still able to perform all actions except for jumping. Oh, is that why? Interesting. To recover from stamina, simply go a little while without repeatedly performing more draining actions such as running, sprinting, jumping, and climbing. Seems simple enough. Arm strength. Your arm is affected by how long you stay in the ready, muzzle forward, and engaged, aiming down sights position. Like stamina, the rate by which your arm strength drops is affected by the weight of your weapon build. The heavier it is, the faster your arm strength will drop. Lower arm strength levels will increase aim jitter shake over time. Yes, it is a noticeable thing because I tend to run around a lot. I surely like pull back on that a little. It says here, to start recovering arm strength, change to a less exerting weapon position such as low ready or high ready or close ready pistols. Putting your weapon away will also recover arm strength. Okay, cool. Glad to know. Steady aim. As seen above, your aiming stability is now adversely affected by your movement, weapon position, and loadout weapon weight. To momentarily stabilize your aim and counter these negative effects to a considerable extent, you can use the new steady aim feature. Simply hold your sprint key, default is control, while stationary, and your character will exhale and stabilize your aiming, represented by a corner vignette effect? I've never known how to say that word. Vignette effect for a few seconds, allowing you to take more accurate shots. Crouching will further reduce the weapon sway. Other effects. In addition to the aspects above, you will also notice the following effects taking place. Weapon inertia will also cause your weapon to overshoot a few degrees beyond the point where you stop moving it and then bounce back to that point. The heavier your overall build, the more pronounced that effect will be. Oh boy. Movement is no longer linear or instant. Starting to move takes a little while and so does stopping. This is particularly noticeable while sprinting, where the momentum will make your character take a few steps before coming to a full stop. Once you release the movement key to counter momentum, you may press a movement key in the opposite direction, for example. Pressing move backwards, which is S, after stopping before sprinting. Okay, so I gotta remember that. So when I'm running and I let go of the shift key, I need to press S to stop myself from walking forward. Yeah, because I noticed that when you stop sprinting, you take like an extra step, and that has gotten me killed in the past. So I gotta be careful with that. Well, let's move on here. Dynamic lighting and optimization. One of the major reworks since version 1029, dynamic lighting was and remains a huge hurdle to implement. Originally only present in Depot, it is now working in every map, including training. Although dynamic lighting was initially a big performance hog, it has gone through numerous optimization passes that have improved frame rate for most systems. It is still generally more demanding than the old static lighting, and other maps will invariably run better than others. But the advantages outweigh the performance impact and have allowed us to implement a few neat features. Interactive lights. All artificial lights are now interactive. They can be shot out and switched off via the power switch boxes around the map. And it's actually pretty cool to see, you know, you being able to actually shoot them out or just turn them off. And then it shows a picture of the power switch box in small town. Each power switch box is either linked to a particular building or area. If you cause enough damage to one of these boxes, it will be disabled and shut down the power. Yeah, so me and my buddy, we were actually testing this out here. And unfortunately, it's very anticlimactic when you actually shoot it. Like there's no sparks or anything. So you're not entirely sure if you actually take out the box. But when you actually shoot it and you decide to go inside, all the power is out and you can't turn it back on. So it's cool that that's there, but it's kind of like lackluster when you actually shoot it out. Like there's no like, like spark and then there's like a, you know, sound. That'd be kind of cool if there was though. But anyways, let's push on here. I'm sure they're going to add it in at some point. Selectable time of day. You can now select the precise time of day you want to deploy in the op board with both hourly and 15 minute increments. In multiplayer, this function is reserved to server admins. Yeah, so if you're hosting your own match, you're able to just like go up to the board and just do it, you know, change up the time right there but on the multiplayer servers obviously it's only the admin that's allowed to do that or you know the permissions that he gives to some other player but anyways let's push on here maps and level
incredible design. In addition to a lot of cleanup on existing maps, here's what's new. Creek. This is a map that we've shown off in the past before, but now they're actually finally talking about it, getting added to the, you know, the main game. It says here, set in a woodland area, plenty of structures, ruins, cabins, shacks scattered around the perimeter with the Epony Creek serpentines from one end to the other of the map. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's this one. I don't think it's this one. I think this was the one that's in the middle, but there was a house that was actually added to the side of the map here. I know that a lot of people were actually complaining about how there wasn't a whole lot of cover like around the sides of the map. So I'm assuming that they added this to give more cover to the player when they're actually moving around. Another issue that I know about this map is that um, sometimes the AI would just shoot through, you know, foliage. Cause there's a lot of foliage in this map. Like this is actually a really tough map to try and, you know, beat. I've tried so many times and I think I've only beat it like once. And that was just like by chance. Creek is playable on Terrorist Hunt, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Team Elimination, and Last Man Standing. I should really try Last Man Standing. I think that's just like a horde mode, right? I don't know. But it's a very gorgeous looking map, but it's like really tough one if you're going on a uh, terrorist hunt. But yeah, let's push on here. The next one we got is Paintball. This is a map that we talked about in the past, but this is the first time it's really getting added to the main game. It says here, John took the old speedball like paintball map and made it even cooler. And I actually really like the design. It's actually a really fun little map. It's ridiculous if you have a shit ton of people on it, like we did uh, in the previous stream, which link at the top right if you want to check that out. But uh, yeah, Paintball is currently playable only on team elimination. Other map changes, Depot Compound is now playable with Terrorist Hunt. Depot has a makeshift bridge joining the warehouse groups together, which I've shown that off in previous live streams. It's called the Love It or Hate It Bridge. <laughs> it's actually a pretty good name for it. Cause I mean, it's really cool that I can actually get to the other roof, but I don't trust it. Like there's no cover whatsoever. But anyways, among other updates, 747 has added a new ladder behind the small hangar that leads to the maintenance rooftop platform. Yeah, I've actually used that in the previous stream to try and snipe people. It's actually a great way to snipe out people inside of that cockpit, but you have to be very careful because uh, you never know if you're hitting a hostage or not. Power switches, boxes have been added to all training maps. They're also present in Small Town, Power Station, and the aforementioned Depot and 747. I'm not really sure where they are on 747. I'm assuming it's the little house that's there. Like there should be like a power button for the airplane too, just to, like shut it off inside. That'd be kind of cool. Like wouldn't the power button be inside of uh, the cockpit? That'd be kind of cool. Turn off the engine, turn off the power, and then just have like certain like areas light up as if like people were sitting there and like turning on the little knob at the top of their you know face right there just it just ideas i'm throwing out here but anyways let's push on here visuals temporal anti-aliasing taa or temporal aa now uses new default parameters to create sharper image and vastly improves the blurriness of the regular effect although it may also negate the smoothing where it may be desired you can tweak the sharpening parameters via the following lines in your ng any file located in this blah 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 we encourage everyone to try different values and let us know how it looks and performs. Yeah, it actually makes the game look a lot better. I actually quite like it a lot. Up next, we got blood effects. New blood effects have been added for an extra layer of immersion, entry exit wounds, surface splatter and impact, mists. It's only the first implementation, but really quite satisfying. Yeah, I like the mists a lot. It really lets me know that I actually hit the dude, right? I like that quite a bit. And the blood splatter against the wall. Oh man, I like that. Moving on here, tech lights. Tech lights use a new, more authentic effect. The brightness, output, color, temperature, and spread is slightly different between each model and based on real life values. These will also get updated somewhere down the line. Are these like the same tack light or are they different? Actually, it says here we should have labeled these so we'd remember which is which, but as you can see, they're different for reference. The X300U top left has the widest angle and it is one of the brightest at 1000 luminance. I don't know what the hell that means. Notice the subtle differences in angle, color, temperature, and brightness. Yeah, I don't think any of these actually look the same. No, I look back at them. Like the brightest one, this is obviously the top left. The darkest one's the bottom right. But anyways, reticles. There should be less instances of a red dot hollow reticle not being visible against backgrounds. Some sites also have less bright steps subject to change. Though they say here that it might not be noticeable. Audio. Soundscapes. All maps, with the exception of 747 and Power Station, have gone from completely silent spaces to having full ambient sounds for both day and night time. Ready room and training levels included. Yeah, I've seen like a lot of people say that sound has really made this game a lot better for people. And I definitely think that sound has given this game a whole new fresh coat of paint, in my opinion. Now, if only they could just bring in animations. I've seen like so many pictures and gifs of it that I just wanted in the game. It just needs to be there. But anyways, new updated gunshots SFX. Mixon has also added updated gunshots sound effects for the M4A1 Block 2.
M416D CQB. M18 Mod 1, work in progress. MK25. G19 Pistol Urban. M1911A1. AK-74MMIMI CQB AKM FAL M110 K1 MK48 Mod 0 SVD MK14 Mod 2 MP5 M9A3 and M17 To be honest, I can't tell the difference if it actually does sound different or not. Because I've been playing like the CTE so long now that I just completely forgot about the originals. So, I mean, if they sound different to you, let me know. Acoustics. Another audio aspect that has received a lot of attention was acoustics. Gunshots and void oculated by walls sound different depending on whether they're fired indoor or outdoor, but will propagate through open doors and windows and will reverb as appropriate. It's a lot of sounds just bouncing everywhere. And I love it. Mixing and mastering. Mixing has revised a lot of sound effects, mainly gunshots, to ensure better quality and consistency. Yes, he has. Mixon has done a fantastic job so far at making the sounds of this game. Pushing on here, Listen servers are back. Remember when Listen servers broke down and resulted in a buttload of negative reviews? Actually, I don't. I don't think I was there for that. That sucked. And also forced us to pull the functionality from the game until a fix was available. Well, all is good now, because Listen servers are back and well-tested. Okay, so this is just basically talking about how to actually host your own thing, and yeah, oh, 
Oh, dude, it's amazing. I really like not having to go into a dedicated server. Now I'm just able to like do whatever I want with the subscribers that I have. You know what I'm saying? It's so much nicer than just going onto a dedicated server because I can't do anything in a dedicated server because it's not mine. So I'm glad that this is here. Now, if only it could go up to like 16 players, like the eight is nice, but 16 would be preferable too. So I could, you know, host my own TDM matches and stuff like that. Moving on here, we get into gear, new weapons, the M110 and the M110K1. These semi-auto rifles are variants of the venerable SR25 rifle from Knight's Armament Co. or CAC, serving in either the sniper rifle or DMR designated marksman rifle rolls. They fire 762 by 51 mm NATO rounds from a 20 round magazine. These weapons are very nice. I like them a lot. The M110 is fitted with a full quality quad rifle handguard and fixed with a stock as well as a 20 inch barrel and has served in regular US military units as the M110 SAS or semi-automatic sniper system. The M110K1 is a shorter and lighter version fitted with a light handguard and less rail space, a collapsible Magpul ACSL stock, and a shorter 16 inch barrel. It is known to be used by SOCOM units, most famously the Marine Special Operations Command or MARSOC? I'm not sure if that's how you say that, but uh, yeah, this is a very nice rifle. I quite liked it a lot when I played with it. In fact, here's a showcase. Cut me at the bottom. Dude, dude, where are you? I'm coughing like hell. I, I don't know why. I just keep coughing ever since yesterday. Open the fucking door. Holy shit. In daylight. Oh shit. Now it's actually dark. Contact! What do I do you? <laughs> I like how you just got that out. Cut. Cut. <laughs> But anyways, we also got the AKM, likely the most ubiquitous assault rifle in the world. The AKM is the AK-47's mass production friendly cousin and has been long overdue for an inclination in ground branch. I know, right? It's a very nice weapon, I gotta say. It fires a 7.62 by 39 Soviet round from a 30 round magazine in either semi or fully automatic modes. It currently can only fit a sound suppressor, the IP-78 Kashton, is that how you say that, scope, or the rail adapter. Up next we got the FAL Tactical, a FAL with a top accessory rail and full quad rail handguard. It fires 762 NATO rounds from a 20 round magazine and also has a selective fire capability, semi-auto and full auto. The FAL is a very nice weapon. I just kind of wish that you could like mod it more, kind of like to escape from Tarkov's level of modding. Like this is that weapon that actually could be modded more, I think, right? Unless I'm wrong. Let me know down in the comments. But anyways, new equipment. We've got the rangefinder. I think the one thing that really sucks about this is that it's basically the same as the binoculars, which is kind of like a letdown it's like, oh, I was kind of excited to see what it actually looked like. But when I put it on, it's like, oh, it's just the binoculars. Oh, that's lame. I hope they fix that. But yeah, it's cool that it's in the game, at least. Moving on. Updated items. They've got the MP5 series. The entire MP5 series of submachine guns has received shiny new models with few notable additions. The rear sight diopter is now of the V-notch type. Although not entirely authentic, it makes for a much better shooting experience with iron sights. I just remember the back sight really being like big, like I could hardly see the freaking front sight when using that thing so i'm kind of glad that it looks like this in addition to the built-in flashlight handguard you can now swap out the regular mp5 handguard for the tri rail for a tri rail handguard both are available under the accessories attachments tab and then it shows off the mp5 here what it looks like it's kind of a dark picture though not really a good looking one to be honest uh but then they actually show the back side of it which yeah that looks a lot better to be honest and then they go on to talk about more of the stuff that they added to the weapons here it says the m4a1 has a new model with a 16 inch barrel standard M4 stock and the KAC RAS handguard from the original SOP mod version. I don't know what any of that means, but okay. The AN PVS 15 NVG, new model to replace the really old night vision goggles we had, still need to replace mount arm. The PMAG, a newer and nicer model for the Magpul, a 30 round PMAG, previously Polymag, we still need to hook it up to the Terran Tactical, extended base pad, however, so the 35 round AR magazine is temporarily unavailable. Pushing on here, 
here. New skins. Added some quick new skin options, because why not? We got Indigo and Black Jeans. Tan Headset. Coyote Brown T-Shirt. Other gear content updates. Color corrected the skin texture for a lot of weapons and apparel. Sweet. Offset rail should now only accept appropriate sights. Backup iron sights and low mount mini red dots. E.g. RMR Micro T1. Scope rails for piggybacking optics should similarly only accept low mount mini red dot sights. Added new suppressor models for the AKs and 9mm pistols. The MK-18 Mod 1 now uses more authentic FDE, flat dark earth, handguard color regardless of the skin selection, known issue, and PEQ unit. And that's pretty much it for the update. The last thing here is what else is going on? It says here, animator Mike Monk is still working diligently on new animations for the new character rig, which is now fully set up and awaiting for the switch to version 1031. Mike has been working closely with our active duty SOF consultant to ensure maximum authenticity. Trust us, we cannot wait to see all of that in action either. Another addition to the team, environmental artist and level designer Will Bulin. Oh, really? This guy has a pretty good portfolio. We'll get into that in just a second. But he is taking care of a little something we hope to be able to reveal soon. As well as in charge of giving all the maps a fresh coat of paint in the future, Will is also assisting as an all-around hard surface artist and was responsible for finishing the M110K1 rifles, started by Dan Conroy, who has since moved on to a different project. Oh, I wonder why. Like Mike, Mr. Bullen has previously worked with our project lead, John Sondecker, on Antimatter Games Rising Storm 2, Antimatter Games, which we'll be talking about them in the upcoming video, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. He also has several held at loose levels in his portfolio, which is a definite plus. Welcome aboard, Will. And if you have made it this far in a very long post, there is a little reward. Open up the console and ground branch and type travel training base. We will get to this in just a second. Let us talk about this Will guy here. So this guy worked on a lot of levels for Hell Let Loose, and I will say that these levels are gorgeous, but my only issue with them is just like the level design itself. Like I feel like there's a lot of open areas or like St. Mary Dumont, those of you that don't know what that is, St. Mary Dumont is a gorgeous looking level, don't get me wrong, but there was a lot of missed opportunities in that map. You have like this gorgeous looking town, but it's put in a spot where you're almost never fighting in it. By the time you finally get to that town, the game is pretty much over. Like that town should have been the centerpiece of the map, but it just wasn't. Now I've heard that they fixed it. I haven't, you know, played it in a long time, so they might have. But uh, yeah. So that's like my only issue is just the design. Like if you could just like revamp all the maps that are here and make them look pretty, then I am okay with that. But him trying to make a map from scratch, I really hope that he actually puts a lot more thought into the maps that he's making. If he does decide to stay with his team and make more maps, like that's my only criticism is just that some of the maps from Hell Let Loose were like a lot of missed opportunities opportunities or things that they could have done better so that's my only issue but other than that he makes gorgeous 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 looking maps. Actually, it doesn't even look like he worked on St. Mary Dumont, so maybe I'm overreacting. But anyways, so let's go ahead and hop into the brand new training map that has been added to the game. Actually, I'm not entirely sure if it was added or if it's on the CTE, but yeah. This map really reminds me of Modern Warfare. You know, the training map where you're doing the timer thing to get through the obstacle course or whatever it's called, and you're being timed? That's what it really reminds me of. You spawn in a big warehouse, and you have the option to go through like another training thing by clicking the start button and running through. There seems to be a lot less things to shoot but uh you could walk out of there and then go to all the other warehouses there's a couple of other things for you to do inside of those they also have a shooting range that actually shows if you actually hit things or not there's this cool little breachable door that i thought was a neat addition And then they also have like a big plane that you could also go through too. If I had any criticisms with this, it's the fact that there's not a whole lot of things to shoot inside of these training areas. So that's pretty much that. Wow, this video is ridiculously long, longer than I thought it was going to be. So I guess I'm gonna end it right here. What are your thoughts on this update? Let me know what you think down below. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like Ground Branch, be sure to like the video, share the video and comment down below. If you're someone that's new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month. That's all I really need. And with that all being said, I I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye